Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at a slide of the thymus. Now this is not a very young thymus, it's actually a relatively mature thymus. Well not fully mature but pretty close to it. And so what you're actually seeing here is something that's going on that is actually removing some of the lymphatic tissue and replacing it with fat. This is a process called involution. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Instead, what I want to do is just give you an idea of the overall structure of this of this um, organ. Okay, so like the other ones that we've looked at in terms of um, lymphatic organs, there's a capsule, a dense irregular connective tissue capsule. Underneath that capsule, what we have is lymphatic tissue, which is subdivided into lobules. So I know these kind of look like nodules, but they're not. They are lobules, in fact, and the difference is that. These are not individual little clumps of lymphatic tissue. They are, in fact, interconnected with one another in three dimensions. The lightly staining region here, the medulla, is connected to this medulla, it's connected to this medulla, it's connected to this medulla. Okay, so these are all interconnected, and it's just that you're looking at a very three dimensional structure in two dimensions. Okay. So they're not individual little clusters of cells. They're actually all interconnected. And um, so that's why they're called lobules and not nodules. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, this is called the medulla, this lighter staining region. And this outer region here is the cortex. Okay. So what we have in between these uh, bits of lymphatic tissue are trabecula. Um, in this case, though, they're quite often referred to as septa instead. So connective tissue septa or connective tissue trabecula are terms you might notice in some of your notes or textbooks. So either one of those um, is used. Um, in many cases, though, septum or septa, plural, are used in most textbooks. Now, you will notice that the staining is different between the medulla and the, the cortex. That's because the cortex has a lot more lymphocytes. And so the cortex has the immature lymphocytes, which are there to be educated. And so they're going to be tested to make sure that they are not reacting to self-antigens and that they are able to recognize the um, MHC2 and MHC1 complexes on the surface of normal cells so that they can look for antigens within them. Okay, so... Out here is where they get their education, for the most part. Most of the cells here will actually not pass the test, so most of these cells will actually be removed. And only the cells that are able to recognize or to differentiate between self and non-self are going to be able to pass across into the medullary region here. Okay, And so the medullary region is much less populated. There's fewer cells here simply because of just how few cells actually graduate. Okay, so now once you get into the medulla, you will end up with some of these lymphocytes able to exit into the bloodstream, uh, but not until they've been tested fully and they have shown that they're capable of not reacting to, for example, self-antigens. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. So let's kind of zoom in on this, go to 100x. take a closer look at the cortex and medulla. Now, one of the things that you'll notice whenever you're looking at a slide of the thymus is that it's a highly vascularized organ, and so you will see blood vessels passing through. But the important thing to understand is that the blood vessels that are passing through, especially through the cortex, are extremely well separated away from all these lymphocytes. The lymphocytes here are immature. They could react to anything, and so they are kind of kept isolated from every other part of everything that's going on around them. And so we have these cells called the reticular epithelial cells that form part of that barrier. And so the blood vessels here are actually surrounded by something called the blood thymus barrier, which involves the endothelium, which is continuous in the capillaries and the blood vessels, as well as uh, layers of macrophages on the outside of the blood vessel. And then beyond that is, again, a layer of the reticular epithelial cells which are going to separate the lymphocytes that are out here 
from whatever might be inside that blood vessel. So these blood vessels will be passing through the cortex, but they're isolated from the cortex and into the medulla, where you tend to see a lot of them end up. Now let's take a closer look at the medulla. And we're going to look for one of the characteristic features of the thymus, which is the Hassel's corpuscle or the thymic corpuscle. Now this can be a little tricky sometimes to really identify because you have a lot of blood vessels in there as well. And so again, the blood vessels are going to be eosinophilic because they are filled with blood. But you're also going to have these Hassel's corpuscles, which are also going to look like they are eosinophilic. And they kind of look like they have a rounded structure. Um, but that rounded structure is filled with eosinophilic material. And so what you're seeing up here, for example, is an example, it's not a textbook example, but it's an example of a Hassel's corpuscle. Those occur in the medulla of the thymus only, okay? So let's see if I can find another one of these. It's a little bit more of a textbook example of these somewhere. There's another blood vessel pattern. There's a nice longitudinal section to a blood vessel actually. Here's another one right here, very clearly filled in anterior with these eosinophilic material. Okay, so that's the medulla of the thymus. This is the cortex. Uh, there are several different types of reticular epithelial cells. We're not going to go into the details of these because under the light microscope, it's really difficult to differentiate between them. Again, the cortex will have a lot of these reticular epithelial cells, as well as a lot of macrophages, and mostly a lot of these nuclei belong to the immature lymphocytes, whereas the medulla is slightly more well-educated lymphocytes, more reticular epithelial cells, and more macrophages. And again, the blood vessels will be coming in here. We'll be picking up some of these educated lymphocytes and taking them away from the thymus. Thank you.